My name is Rob Scanlon. I am uh, the project lead of the Inferno project for MITRE. Uh, a little bit about myself. I have been in the fire testing space for about uh, three years or so. Previous to working on Inferno, I worked on uh, MITRE's Crucible project. Um, so I've been working and testing for a little while. Um, this project is sponsored by the Office of the National Coordinator for, uh, for Health IT, which is part of the reason why I got a couple of nice uh, shout outs by Steve and his two presentations. Um, and I think I'll just go ahead and get started. And I think a good place to get started is what is Inferno? Um, so this is open source fire testing. Uh, there's a lot of ways to sort of do fire testing systems, a lot of different kind of things to take in, into account. Um, from our perspective, we're trying to make this a, a pretty streamlined uh, testing tool that's uh, very much use case or implementation guide focused. So instead of looking at the whole fire specification, we're, we're trying to test uh, very narrow use cases that are defined by implementation guides. We're trying to, because we're, we have that narrow focus, we're trying to make it really easy to do the testing. So you're uh, basically presented with exactly the pieces that you, um, you are expected to test. And, and we try to make it so that we can walk you through that whole process as basically easily as possible. Uh, the, part of the whole reason why this, uh, this tool exists is to uh, test the 21st century cures rule um, uh, from a, the proposed 21st century cures rule open API uh, criteria from ONC. The, the full, uh, full name of that is the 21st Century Cures Act Interoperability Information Blocking and the ONC Health IT Certification Program proposed rule. Um, particularly the uh, section 170, 315 G10, which uh, speaks to the open idea, uh, basically the, the requirement for an open, um, uh, an open standard specifically and it specifically names FHIR. Um, but this isn't uh, the only thing that we're really focused on. It, uh, you know, we're, we're also trying to make this a extensible testing tool. Um, and so the, the goal is kind of longer term. We're trying to make it easier uh, to write or reuse tests for different implementation guides. Um, so we can basically do basically take the investment that ONC has put into uh, basically doing certification for their rule and make it so that you can reuse it um, and, and potentially apply it to another um, another space. Now for this talk, I, um, I was trying to struggle, I was struggling a little bit to sort of decide what level to come in at. Um, I'm kind of going in the middle here where I'm going to talk about the uh, specifically how we are testing against um, testing against that rule. And through that process, you'll kind of get a, a view of what Inferno is. Um, just keep in mind that um, there are some more, much more advanced features that Inferno has. Um, and I'm around, you know, the, obviously the rest of today and tomorrow. Um, and I'm always available to talk about some of the more advanced, uh, advanced features. But I'm not really going to get too much, get too far into, into that in this talk. Um, so as I said, I'm focusing on the, the, the ONC uh, API criteria. And I'll, and I'll cover some common issues and some of the uh, advanced uses. Uh, so this is all, this is open source, and uh, we do host a reference instance at inferno.healthit.gov. Um, I'll leave this up for a second if you guys want to hop on uh, the site now. It's easy enough just to Google um, ONC Inferno and ONC Inferno GitHub. Um, uh, it's, it's all out there on the, uh, on the, on the Google. Um, so quick background, if you, um, if you missed some of Steve's talks, uh, uh, the sort of the, the big news this year was ONC uh, in their 21st Century Cures proposed rule. They actually named Fire as the, the required standard for um, uh, for their standards-based API for patient um, uh, services. <clears throat> and um, so this is a big you know so this is a big rule. I you know a lot of I don't know how many people have read the whole thing. Uh, it's it's uh, it's been like six or seven hundred pages, um, but it is all about uh, developers and the health developers. I, I, I don't have a slide here for it, but I just out of curiosity, I sort of generated a word cloud, uh, and the most prevalent phrase in there is health developer. Um, so it has a, you know, it's, it's widely applicable to this group. Um, and an interesting read. It does have a, a bit of background on some policy um, in this space, as interesting as sort of a, I guess, a, a kind of a policy document uh, can be. Um, but from our perspective, the, from a technical perspective, the, the important pieces, these are sort of the important pieces. Um, it proposes using Fire, and of course, Fire is a you know it's kind of a platform standard. As as we all know, you need to you need to profile it in order to have sort of an interoperable kind of more plug and play kind of solution. Um, and there the the profiling set that they proposed based on um, uh, basically where the the industry was when they were writing the rule was 
um, to choose the Argonaut, Pro the Argonaut Data Query Implementation Guide, which is read-only, uh, Fire DSTU2, um, and provides basically the, the requirements of the, the, the data, basically the data criteria, as well as defining the API, the required API, so which queries are required. Um, so that only gets you sort of part of the way. You also need a, a way to, uh, because this is sort of app um, patient access and app focused, you need a way for, uh, for people to authorize apps to access data on their behalf. And, uh, and that's where the Smart on Fire sort of piece comes into play. Um, uh, <clears throat> as well as the, as far as authentication goes, um, OpenID uh, Connect. Uh, and then on top of that, so we have these implementation guides that have been uh, validated through HL7. ONC does uh, say that there are a couple of pieces that they feel are a little bit too permissive. Um, so they uh, specify that you have to use like a refresh token, whereas that's not necessarily required in the Smart App uh, Launch Guide. Um, they add a couple of additional resources, uh, fields on the uh, elements in the, re, in the patient resource that are required. And they've also named provenance and document reference um, for clinical notes, although they don't uh, provide many, many details on exactly how to sort of implement that. They sort of leave that up for comment. Um, and speaking of for comment, this is all you know, subject to change based on ONC's final rule. If, uh, as you guys all probably know, just want to make sure this is clear. So a lot of the stuff that I'm showing you is, is based on um, this set of standards, although if they choose to, for example, uh, name a different, um, a, a different um, version of FHIR, we, uh, the, the rule states that they would uh, sort of have the, kind of the equivalent um, profiles associated with that. So, um, so just sort of keep that in mind. So I'm going to go into um, the, so one sort of piece I didn't, didn't quite mention is that our focus here is on, um, has been on the, the rule certification. I said that we also want to make it extensible. Um, and when we're talking about the, the program um, uh, uh, role, we, 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 refer to, we refer to that set of tests as the Inferno Program Edition um, <clears throat> versus the, the Community Edition, which we are looking at uh, doing, sort of looking kind of more broadly than just the, the proposed rule. Um, but I'm focusing on the, the Program Edition here. Um, and so from a, a test, testing sort of methodology perspective, we follow the draft test method that was provided um, along with, uh, with the rule. There's a, a link there, but you can just grab it off of um, ONC's site. Uh, the sort of the, since this is server testing, the way we go about testing uh, from Inferno's perspective is that we mimic the, life, the, the full life cycle of a, of a very demanding client application. Um, so this is server testing, right? Um, so not only do we test the actual, you know, fire queries and, and, um, and the data that we get back to make sure that it adheres to all the right profiles, uh, but we also ask the tester to walk through the registration process uh, even if it's manual registration, we have the the uh, the tester go and um, and authorize Inferno as an app. We do the both the the launch sequences, uh, and then we go through that whole process. Then we run all the the fire kind of related uh, queries. So a lot of this stuff is actually OAuth specific because um, that's actually a pretty big uh, part of this um, uh, part of this rule. Um, and so we mimic that whole sort of uh, life cycle. So one of the things that we tried to do, you know, I, I mentioned we tried to make this easy to use. Um, uh, Inferno learns about the server as it tests. Um, so uh, so the idea is that we, we try to make the, some of the later tests have learned from like the earlier tests, right? Uh, and so we actually save state about the test as we, as we move along. And so from that perspective, it's, this is, you know, the Inferno kind of does functional level testing um, to make it easier and it's, it's also kind of end-to-end -end testing. Um, so we kind of do uh, runs through kind of that whole process um, from beginning to end, and, uh, and we check all the data that we get back. So the rule is about DSDU2, um, but we are actively building out the R, an R4 set of tests in case ONC uh, decides to go uh, that route instead. Um, and the R4 tests are based on US Core. We are pretty early in the, sort of the, the development life cycle of that. We, um, uh, we're, uh, we still have some gaps in, in basically those tests, although um, we're looking at basically by the end of this month to have a, a, um, uh, a, a pretty solid set of tests associated with R4, but you're welcome to, to try them out now. We, we welcome early feedback. Um, and then again, all of this tests are subject to change, uh, you know, just being having to do with, you know, the, since the rule might change, um, we may change the tests, and we're also just trying to sort of improve the, 
the, the quality of tests before the final uh, rule is released. So just keep that in mind. If you try your servers out today then, uh, and everything passes or fails, it, that might uh, change in the future. Um, so with that, I, I'm going to be brave here. I'm actually going to go and uh, give a bit of a demo. I'm just going to walk through the, uh, the whole application. And uh, sometimes I think just showing is, is better than trying to explain what's going on. Um, I hope everything, you know, there's always kind of the rule of the demo, right? Um, so hopefully everything goes well. It's <clears throat> um, a decent size for everybody. Uh, so yeah, so I'm just going to go through the, the public instance that ONC has stood up. Uh, we did try to make Inferno something that you can run locally. So this is just a reference instance. Um, and along with that, we don't necessarily, we basically will clear out the data on a, on a fairly uh, frequent basis. Um, uh, but if you want basically to persist some of the data longer, you're welcome to, to download and um, sort of clone it off GitHub and, and run it locally. We have instructions for deploying this. Um, in Windows and Mac um, and Linux, uh, so it's sort of depending on your, your infrastructure, you can, you can run it yourself, or you're welcome to try it out on, um, on this public instance as well. Uh, as you see, there are the two sort of um, branches here, the ONC program edition versus the community edition. I'm focusing on the, the program edition here, but you're welcome to try out the community edition. Um, and over time, you can expect the community edition to basically be um, have a lot more investment in that once we, uh, once we have the, the program edition uh, basically squared away. I'm going to go ahead and, and try it here. We uh, you sort of provided a, a, a sort of a landing page here where you're presented with a choice between which version of Fire you are interested in testing, um, the DSDU2 or R4. I'm going to go ahead and um, walk through the DSDU2. You need to have a, a Fire server to actually test against, so I'm going to use a, a, um, a reference server uh, that ONC hosts on there, what they call their site env. Um, uh, which is just uh, basically a, a pretty simple file, fire server with an OAuth um, sort of in front. So, uh, but it's a good sort of way of just showing the, all the different tests. So to get started, you don't have to log in or anything. We, we try to make this uh, easy to get going. You just click begin. Um, and you're presented with basically the, uh, the test procedure. So along the top, there are four tabs there uh, that we broke up the, the different pieces of the, the testing. Discovery and registration, standalone patient, um, patient app, uh, EHR practitioner app and data access. Um, and so, you know, briefly, the discovery and, and registration is all about getting the, the metadata endpoint, checking to make sure that you say that you um, support everything that is required. Um, uh, the, and then there's the discovery process for, uh, for Smart on Fire where we actually get the, um, the things like the authorization URL. Um, and so after you run through this, we actually will save that, that information in the, the state so that we can use it in later tests because the later tests are, require that. <clears throat> um, and sort of following through the, the next uh, set of tests after you pass that, that first set of tests is the standalone patient app. So this is where Inferno goes basically into a, it basically mimics a, a standalone patient app, as you, know, you can probably imagine by the, the name. Um, and what we do is we actually initiate a, uh, a standalone launch. Then we'll, we'll, uh, we get an authorization code. We try to read a patient access. We do OpenID Connect, so we um, actually check the authorization associated with it. We'll do a token refresh, because that's, uh, that's actually required. And then we'll try to read a patient again, right? So we've sort of strung together these uh, different groups of, of tests. And part of the way that um, Inferno is, is architect because we try to make all these different um, what we call sequences uh, reusable so that if you have, if you're writing a, a, a set of tests for, they might use, um, also use Smart on Fire, you can reuse each of these pieces um, and pretty easily kind of plug everything and compose everything together. Um, after that, we do the EHR practitioner app launch, which is uh, very similar to the standalone patient um, app launch, except Inferno kind of goes into a, this sort of pretends like it's a EHR embeddable app, and it waits for you to launch it, and I'll, I'll show you that briefly. Um, and then after you go through that whole process, you should have an authorization code from one of the, the previous uh, attempts, and we will go through um, and and more or less do like a crawl of all the data that we can access um, on the server. And we check to make sure all the data is internally consistent um, and that you meet all of the requirements of the, uh, of the profiles associated with us. Um, and then finally, at the end, you get a report that you can, you can print out. So this is the sort of the, the general workflow. Um, I'll go ahead and just, uh, just walk through a couple of the pieces. So um, since the, the very first step is, is discovery and registration, um, so you, we need to 
uh, since we are doing manual registration, the, the idea here is that you need to register Inferno as an app, so we provide you the information um, to do that. And then we need a client ID uh, and optionally a, um, a client secret. Uh, the rule actually states that you can support, um, you don't actually, I believe you don't have to do both, but you have to do, uh, support one or the other. And so I'm just going to hop on um, the, this uh, sandbox. Uh, this is just a public sandbox. Um, and I, before I did this, I, I went and I registered uh, this um, uh, instance of Inferno. And I'm just going to go ahead and grab the client secret. And I think I might have missed an L. Hopefully I got it. Um, and we'll go ahead and, <clears throat> and execute the test. And so now this is where you know, all of the, the um, discovery and registration steps happen. So we save the client secret uh, and the client ID. We went out and grabbed the conformance statement. This is DSTU2, so it's still the, the conformance statement. The R4, it's obviously a capability statement. We do the smart on fire discovery. Uh, <clears throat> And if there's a little button that we have for a state that you can basically track what Inferno has learned about your server as you've kind of gone through the process. Uh, so at this point now we know all the, the, the different um, resources that you support that are relevant to our tests. Uh, we save the, the server endpoints. Um, so we know a little bit more about your server um, and you've passed all the tests up to this point. So the next uh, set of tests is to demonstrate that you can log in as a sta standalone um, or basically authorize Inferno as a standalone. Um, patient app, um, and I will go ahead and uh, just get started on that. <clears throat> now, something I'd like to point out is that um, these tests they require a set of inputs. A lot of test systems, you know, they don't you don't necessarily have a set of inputs or or, or, or anything like that. You just have configuration. Um, uh, but Inferno is smart enough to figure out based on the the sort of series of components that you have, which um, which types, which basically. Um, parameters that you need. Um, and then also it, it's set up so that you can lock the, um, some of the pr things that you learned in the previous step so that users can't go and uh, maybe um, in the previous step it's returned a, a different uh, authorized endpoint. We've sort of locked it out so that the pieces that we've gathered ourselves um, will uh, we'll basically close it down. Um, we do, one sort of common question is about scopes. Uh, the rule is pretty, um, uh, uh, permissive as far as scopes go, so um, you, we can either you can either support the wildcard scopes or not, um, and um, and one other thing is it does um, focus on the uh, <coughs> um, it, uh, the actual um, smart app launch implementation guide, the the balloted version, which actually made a few uh, changes that not all systems have implemented yet. Things like uh, fire user as opposed to uh, to profile. <clears throat> so just something to keep in mind as if you try this out against existing systems. Not many systems actually support that yet. <clears throat> so we click execute, right? And and um, one of the you know if you're familiar with the the whole flow of of um, OAuth, you actually get redirected away. We try to make it clear in Inferno that what we're doing now is we're going to the the server, uh, <clears throat> the authorization server. You click continue. Uh, we have to log in. So this is you know, mimicking exactly what a, an end user would see. Um, and then we have the, you know, the very familiar um, do you approve of these, uh, of these scopes. Go ahead and allow all of them, sure. Um, this is patient focused, so uh, we need a patient context. Um, and so uh, that's why the system prompts, prompts us for basically to choose a patient. Um, and then we continue on, right? So we actually, so that whole process was represented as a, a series of tests. So the um, so Inferno as a platform isn't necessarily specific to um, having OAuth built in. It's something that you can specify in the tests, which gives us a lot of flexibility um, as far as extensibility, right? So um, it's not a core. You don't have to change a platform in, or, in order to support something like Smart on Fire or CDX hooks or anything like that. Um, and so good. So the, everything uh, turned green. We went through the process. Um, one thing I didn't show you is that you can sort of you can zoom in and you actually see exactly what happened at each um, at each sort of group of tests here, right? So you have a list of of um, of all of our different subtests, uh, the different inputs that go into the test, 
um, which is, in this case is a token and a patient ID that we learned earlier. You can see all the different requests. There are only two in this case. Basically, we're just checking to make sure that if you don't pass an authorization uh, token, you should get a 401 back, sort of a negative test. Um, and if you, um, uh, but we do expect uh, that you, we got a 200 back if you um, do present that authorization token. You can click into details. So a lot of this stuff is, I think, things that you would expect of a testing system. So you can see everything that went on, um, all the different things that we sent, um, everything that came back. <clears throat> um, and so you can see the, sort of basically the, the full, full set of everything that is there. Um, one of the things that we are trying to do, and um, I, if you click on some of these with show details, um, let's, let me choose one. We're still actively kind of uh, filling this stuff out, but we're trying to add a lot of um, information about exactly what we're doing in each uh, piece of, uh, of, of all the different tests. We're trying to we recognize that you have to, as a developer, you have to look all over the place, I think, in order to get um, all the information that you need in order to figure out how to implement things. So we're trying to pull things together so that if you do run into problems, um, we have a lot of uh, basically helpful um, information. Um, and also, we, we try to provide a lot of traceability. So since we're dealing with a couple of stacks of standards, um, we try to point to exactly where each of the, each of the um, uh, pieces come from. Um, so the EHR practitioner app is pretty similar uh, to the standalone. The one difference is this: once you once you start it, you click execute. Inferno actually goes into a um, and basically a Im embedded EHR mode where we are waiting for it to be launched. This is sort of a part that people find a little confusing, but the idea is that um, now Inferno is in a you know now it's pretending like it's a um, a uh, an app that can be launched from an EHR. So if you went and uh, to the HR and simulated an, an app launch. Um, it would go back into Inferno, it would continue the tests, uh, and then we'd continue along, and, and then we'd sort of finish out the whole smart um, uh, sort of launch process, right? Um, and after that, it's all pretty similar to what happened prior. Let's let it finish up before I hop over to the, uh, the final step, which is data access. And this is where we basically do a crawl of the, the server. We try to pull out as much information as we can. Um, we check for internal consistency. We try to be smart about um, how we have uh, develop the, the, the different um, query criteria. So Argonaut Data Query Implementation got a lot of it is about the different uh, kinds of searches that need to be supported. Um, and so we generate uh, searches that we expect to get a certain data basically certain data back based on what we've seen uh, previously. So if we click Start, let's kind of finish this out. Um, uh, now we're going through and running all those queries. One thing I do want to mention is our, uh, so right now we have a um, sort of a bring your own data kind of, um, kind of approach where uh, we ask the systems under test to provide a very complete set of data where all of the, the required elements um, are there, all the required resources are supported. Um, and then we go and, and check to make sure that everything, um, everything uh, looks good. The, uh, we do allow the server. So for example, if you are um, logged in under one patient, you ask for all um, observations, for example. And they, let's say they don't have any, ob any observations. We don't fail you in that case. We allow you to basically log in under a different user and then just run the observation set of tests so that in aggregate, we've seen everything that, that we basically need to see. Um, I'm not sure. We might end up, um, one, of the, one of our tasks is to actually generate um, a solid set of uh, test data. Um, so we're, we're going to be looking in, into that in sort of the, the very near future. So one of the things we might change about this is we might be a little more strict about having to preload uh, a very specific set of data um, where we know it, it we basically, we, we know it hits all the corner cases. That isn't the case right now, though. And so um, kind of going through the provenance tests, and that's the last one. Um, and so uh, we actually got what we call a skip here because they, uh, in this one case, they didn't have any care team uh, care teams identified associated with this patient. So we basically say, hey, um, you know, we, you, you know, you, it looks good, but uh, if you go into sort of the show details, um, when you, we actually did a uh, search for the that certain kind of uh, patient and category, we didn't get anything back, um, and then. <clears throat> oh, well, we didn't get any back that's of the sort of the right category, and so therefore we um, uh, we basically allow you to skip. And so the idea is that then if, if you want, you can go back, 
log in under a different user, um, and rerun just the skip tests, right? So in aggregate, you should have everything you need. And finally, the final step here is the, the report where we go and we generate some metrics along the top, um, as well as a full list of everything that happened through that whole uh, test procedure process. And, um, and sort of the idea behind here is that you can sort of print what you have um, and sort of point to this is exactly you know, what, um, what I did. So that's sort of very briefly the um, Inferno from kind of an end-to-end -end perspective on, on program testing. Um, let me hop back to the slide deck, if I could. <clears throat> We're on time, so uh, 25, plenty of time. So I really wanted to just very briefly talk about some of the common issues and questions we've seen. Um, there have been a number of question. Yes. Um, within your data set, you have also false data to see that uh, error handling is done correctly, uh, error messages are coming out at the right point, or is it just positive data? So right now it's uh, positive data. So we're checking to make sure that you're able to basically send back the, yeah, show that you can support correct data, right? Um, so that's, so in speaking to the, um, if we go the route of, of actually providing data that we would probably provide, you know, for example, missing data and see how you handle that. Um, um, that's sort of the, kind of the extent probably that, that we're gonna do, so. Thank you for the question, good question. Um, so really quickly, some of the common issues. I, I touched on this briefly before. Uh, the Smart App Launch Framework version one has some changes that not many um, implementations in the wild support, particularly around uh, how you discover metadata. So there's a, there's a new well-known endpoint, basically, that's, uh, that's a little bit more in line with other of how OAuth handles uh, doing discovery. So that's required now, and a lot of uh, systems don't necessarily support that. Um, similarly, OpenID Connect, the scope associated with that now is fire user as opposed to profile. Not many systems uh, support that. Uh, flexibility in OAuth scopes is a common, uh, common issue. And so the, the way that Inferno handles that is we just allow the user to, or the, basically the system under test to tell us, give us a, a set of scopes that should work. Uh, and then we, um, afterwards, we validate to, to make sure that it is within sort of the set of scopes that are allowed, uh, so wildcard or not wildcard. Um, uh, so we don't do things like, you know, there, you can go really kind of crazy, obviously, with this. You can test like permutations um, and all these different things, but we don't go into that depth. So we're, we're trying to keep this at sort of a reasonable kind of level of, um, of testing so you can be, um, so you can, uh, so you can know that they actually support what they're supposed to support, but we don't try to do every single kind of permutation or combination. Something that just from my, my sort of experience doing testing is that um, this might be kind of obvious to the people that are very familiar with FHIR, but capability statements are very important. Um, and a lot, of, a lot of times, a lot of implementations have subtle errors in the capability statements, which break a lot of uh, clients out there um, if you're trying to use a generic client. So you have to really kind of pay attention to that. I also mentioned um, the EHR launch sequence can be kind of disorienting, so as you're using this system, just be aware, um, sort of read the, I, I sort of have a, like everyone, I see a modal, I just click OK or cancel or whatever, but uh, if you actually read it, um, it sort of describes what you want to do. And then finally, the data set issue is sort of a, um, is something to, that, that we're sort of tracking and trying to sort of get the right, I think, level of um, test thoroughness versus uh, not making it um, too hard to actually do these tests. So. Um, so that'll be, a, I think, a big part going forward. Uh, <clears throat> a couple of, I just wanted to point out a couple of the more advanced features of Inferno. I'd sort of just walk through the kind of the basic, uh, basic <clears throat> portions. But uh, we do have a command line interface that is um, that's very full featured. It's actually, in, in certain respects, a little more full featured than the, the web interface right now. Uh, so you can do things like headless testing if you actually want to, um, uh, if you actually want to specify uh, from a sort of an executable perspective, um, how to go in sort of a computable format to how do you go and click through the OAuth screens. You can do that um, and you can chain together the tests. Uh, you can run this in like a continuous in, in integration environment if you want. Um, we have some examples of that on the, on the website. So that's a, 
um, sort of one aspect. As developers ourselves, we want a, sort of a way to, to be able to do this. And you can sort of imagine a lot of different interesting ways that you can uh, use this kind of capability. Um, and then also uh, sort of another sort of advanced uh, feature that I'm not going to really talk about that much right now, but um, I'd love to talk to anyone who's interested in using this. We did try to make this as extensible as possible. Um, so you can define all your different tests and then you can kind of glue them together. We've, we've structured it so that it's sort of the concept is that you write a set of tests for an implementation guide. And if there's another implementation guide that might use that implementation guide as is kind of pretty common these days. So for example, if you're building on top of US Core, you can use, reuse the US Core tests, uh, which is built on top of Smart on Fire, and you can kind of reuse those. And then you can glue all of them together into, um, into basically a, a set of um, uh, basically your own kind of uh, test procedure. And you can do things like um, uh, you can set default parameters on, on sort of the inputs and outputs, and you can chain things together. Um, so we did spend a fair amount of time on, on that piece. Um, and this is an area that I'd like to, to actually improve quite a bit as we sort of, as we uh, start investing more resources on the community side of things. Um, really quickly, the, so, so what are we working on actively today? Um, we are uh, working heavily on the refining, basically refining and improving those set of tests that you see. Um, uh, it's particularly around R4, so we have an implementation, but uh, working on improving those. Um, I personally really think that uh, things like documentation help traceability to uh, the different, um, actually, the, you know, the actual standards is very, very helpful. So we're, we're working on improving, uh, improving that. And then also the, the reference data set, as I mentioned earlier. Um, we'd like to make Inferno a lot more reusable. So I, you know, I think we have a pretty good start, but we can uh, even improve that more. One of the areas is we're, we're working on is test generation. So, um, so we do, uh, you know, we do look at, we, we use um, FIRE's internal, uh, basically, structure to do a lot of the testing. Um, but we're looking to bring that up, uh, I think, another level so that you can um, basically just point Inferno to uh, a set of implementation guides and generate uh, certain classes of tests, basically, depending on what you're uh, trying to do. Um, <clears throat> And then finally, you know, we're, we, we would like to improve sort of the developer-focused features that just overall lower the bar, right, for implementing standards conformance systems. I mean, really, that's the, I mean, my goal here is to, is to try to make it easier for the systems out there to, uh, uh, to implement these standards properly, to make it easier to implement a standards conformance system than it is to, to make up your own. Um, and a big part of that is having good tools and a good t test system um, uh, associated with that in order to uh, uh, to more, in order to make your life a little bit easier. So, and with that, um, I'm going to wrap it up there, but I'd like to, I'd be happy to take more questions. Um, uh, my contact information is there, and, um, you know, we, this is an open source project, and so everything, everything is out on the, um, out on GitHub, so please uh, check it out if you want to see any details. So a couple questions um, back in the, in the red. Sure. So, so the question is, do we look at the server's capabilities or conformance statement um, and uh, to, to basically determine which, which tests to run? We do. So we have, uh, so I didn't show you that, show, show you it there, but it, because I used a server that basically supported everything. Um, but yeah, part of the Argonaut Data Query Implementation Guide states that you have to support patient plus at least one other resource. Uh, in order to sort of meet the minimum requirement. So what happens in that case, we see that you don't support all these other profiles. Uh, and then we just have a little sort of icon there that states, oh, you don't support that, so you don't have to run it. Um, and then it basically, you basically emits that set of tests, right? So there's that aspect. There's other, also, so c capability and conformance statements also can be used for uh, defining a set of requirements, um, which is something that uh, US Core does. Um, and we have, we're also, when I say, when I talk about test generation, that's uh, sort of an area that we're focused on as well. So instead of, you know, a capability statement defining what a given server does, instead look at uh, what a capability that defines, a, you, know, uh, you know, the requirements, uh, the API requirements of an implementation guide, we're working on making it so that you can generate a set of tests based on that as well. So we're kind of looking at both sides. Uh, in the green? 
So in those tests, it's just read. We do have uh, history because that's an optional aspect of a least data query implementation guide. As a platform, we certainly support um, testing writes. It's just that uh, you know, basically given the, um, the sort of the limit, the I mean the scope right of this of this implementation guide, it didn't make sense to to test that. So, um, so yes and no, I suppose is the is the answer. Yep. So are you asking if, um, as, so, I, so our test will pass, if, so if I'm understanding, so the question is, uh, can you have a, a, can you, if you write the, you know, the fire server, but then you use somebody else for your open ID? Um, yeah, or are you able to be your own, be an open ID provider and OAuth 2 provider? An open ID provider and OAuth 2 provider. Um, so I think, um, I mean, you know, we're, we're basically testing, so I don't know if this answers your question, but we're basically testing an integrated sort of whole, um, which doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be the ones that write the OAuth or OpenID sort of uh, implementations. You can have someone else do it, and then we sort of test sort of the combination, right? Uh, which sort of demonstrates that you're capable of integrating with a uh, OpenID or OAuth uh, system. Um, and I, I'm, I'm a little concerned that I didn't quite get your, Answer your question. Okay, and so that's how that's sort of the, the current approach, um, you know. And again, Inferno is sort of written so that we can, you know, if we sort of decide that that you know makes more sense to decouple that, you certainly just basically it's a configuration where uh, we just allow you know it to be separate. But um, our focus here is on sort of end-to-end, -end sort of full integrated system to demonstrate that you can do the whole thing, um, whether or not you actually are providing all the components. Another question? So, uh, are you planning on uh, using the test script resource as well, which is standard required? Great question. So, um, so this is so this to, to talk a little bit about how we write these tests. This is based on um, uh, the Ruby stack, basically, um, and so all of our tests are written in Ruby. Um, they are not written in test scripts. We um, we do have a full Ruby test script implementation as part of, part of Crucible. Um, we did not integrate that into here just from a, um, uh, it is um, a lot faster to not use test scripts, right? So um, I think part of the, the community work, we might sort of circle back and look to see if it makes sense to provide that as an option. Um, because yes, it is in the standard. We are very familiar with that, um, that set of standards, but we chose to, to not do that sort of initially here. Okay. Yep. Any other questions? So thanks everybody for uh, for attending. Please um, uh, let me know if you have any questions. And um, also, I mean, just in general, I, I, there, I feel like a lot of people have been talking about in this conference about all these sort of issues they've had, sort of trying to integrate with real world systems. I'd love to hear about that so that we can make sure everything's represented in, in tests, right? So we can cover everything. So thank you.